what is good we're back we're gonna hit you with a little top 24 ish dynasty wide receiver rankings see who's moving and falling uh in the ranks here we got the tripod let's jump into it and and like we talked about with the last wide receivers here uh, or the last set of rankings we did you know we'll probably have a little bit of double talking in there um it's difficult because you know you might knock somebody for for something and and then you know say say it's all right with another guy so just kind of how this goes a little bit we try not to do it a ton as we're going here we'll we'll, we'll try to recognize it and, and call ourselves out when we're doing it so uh, but, you know, I don't like to be too, too reactionary, but there is some new information and, and some questions have, have at least semi been answers that you might feel a little more comfortable and a little less comfortable. So just a good exercise to do uh, six, six weeks in here. Uh, so let's see where we're at. I think Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase have have uh, stayed at the top. Maybe there was a question mark about Jamar Chase if you're a redraft style dynasty player. Uh, but uh, I think that they're staying in the top two by themselves. Correct for everybody. Uh, I have them in a tier with a couple others, uh, okay. but, but yeah, I, I, I could, I could definitely, um, I can't knock them. You know what I mean? Uh, they're just talents that, that are just above pretty much anything else that we're seeing in the league right now. Uh, there's only a couple that I could put in that cal- category that have the, the ceiling plays that they do. So yeah, absolutely. They have to stay at the top. I just, I have others that I can make a case for. Who, who, who would you throw in that tier then? Uh, AJ Brown and CD lamb were, are kind of the two that I would be, I'd be tempted to put in that same tier. They're just absolute difference makers. And uh, they, I mean, having either of those two on your team can actually win you weeks. And I think that that's an absolute difference uh, between any of the other players on the field when you have them on your fantasy team. So I have to put them in the same category. Big D? Yeah, for me, it's just those two. But I mean, it's uh, AJ Brown and CD Lamb are both arguably... Uh, super high ceiling guy, so I, I, I can definitely see it. Um, I think I have AJ Brown a little bit lower than than consensus, um, but CD Lamb's my you know he'd be third overall or in my tier two discussions there. I I think I brought up to UKC a couple maybe it was a week ago or so. I was like, man, what 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 was our feelings on CD Lamb because he's just been kind of quiet this season, like not not in a, not in a necessarily a bad way, but just kind of like nobody's talked about oh get out now nobody's talked about oh he's a value he's just kind of been you know he's just kind of been there so i just um i think he's a he's a, he's an interesting target now he's got this this primetime game that can change value <laughs> that could change values and especially in the redraft world uh in redraft slash fantasy world pretty drastically with a with a big game or a horrible game or whatever but um but yeah for me he's he's definitely kind of solidified himself right behind uh chase and jefferson and and with with the upside of hopping into that tier, there's there's not too many that I feel can hop into tier one. He's one of those guys that I feel like can. I would tend to agree. I'm I'm leaving Jefferson and Chase in a tier by themselves. Um, I think I had AJ Brown and uh, CD in a, in the next tier by themselves uh, and in the preseason rankings. I think for me, w- what this exercise is doing right now, and I you know, and I, I maybe it's a bit of a cop out, but I think I think I've just expanded a lot of my tiers here. So for this for this tier, I just feel like this tier has just gotten a whole lot bigger for me. AJ Brown's in there. I feel like CD Lamb's in there. Waddle was always somebody who I felt like could be one of those guys that could jump up into that elite tier if Sands Tyreek. Olave hasn't quite come to fruition this year. Seems like the Saints are struggling a little bit. So maybe I've and I don't think it's his fault, um, but maybe he's fallen out of favor with me into this tier. But I, I'm I'm keeping Garrett Wilson. Uh, I'm moving him up into this tier. I'm putting Waddle into this tier, and I'm putting the Sun God in this tier as well. Um, I just, I just feel like, like maybe, maybe the ceiling isn't as crazy as AJ Brown's is for the Sun God, but the the floor is just so good, and the ceiling game. I mean, we just had one um, this week with with him coming back from an injury. He's just so damn exciting, and it, I feel like when you see him in your opponent's lineup, you're like, damn, I, I need I need somebody else to match him to keep me in this in this game. And, and for that reason, I'm kind of bloating tier two up right now to some, some guys I'm pretty excited about. Garrett Wilson has been pretty good with Zach Wilson. Uh, the targets have been there. Those big blowups haven't been there, but you, you're getting to see that it, it doesn't, I don't, not that it doesn't matter who his quarterback is, but my God, if Aaron Rodgers is there right now, I feel like we'd be talking about is Garrett Wilson up there with Chase and, um, mm-hmm. and, and Jefferson. So I've bloated uh, tier two up a little bit here. Uh, uh, KJ, who, who's your next, couple of guys here 
Yeah. So, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, for sure. He, he's actually another one where I was tempted to make a case, uh, to, to push him into a tier of his own just because, I mean, we see when he's on the field, what he can do. I mean, he's already, he already has three games this year, over a hundred yards and his first game back off injury. I mean, he got what, 15 targets. Uh, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's unreal. If he are in any kind of PPR, I mean, he's, He's yeah. a locked in wide receiver one for us. Right. Season, and that, so. that's a good note is we are talking full point PPR when we're doing these rankings. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, and we're already seeing some of the touchdowns uh, that, you know, he was kind of missing uh, before last season. So I like to see that. And I think that, you know, as long as this production continues, I don't think there's any questions about him on your team. So he's he's definitely a cornerstone for me. All right. Uh, Big D, who, who's how's this next tier shakedown for you? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty similar. I've got Lamb, Alave, Waddle, and Wilson. Uh, those are the four guys that I have in this tier. Um, mostly, the, so my previous rankings were from July. This is October. And I try not to overreact, underreact too much, even right. even though we, we've seen some movement. You know, like you said with Garrett Wilson, I mean, he's still just a monster out there. If Aaron Rodgers was throwing him the ball, you know, we could see, I, I could see some different things. Waddle is, um, you know, he can he can take over a game. Um he doesn't have to right now, but I think he can in the future, you know, which yeah. is, uh, which lines up really well with eventually Hill will, will be over the Hill, right. He'll go, he'll go past. And, and, um, and I, and I've always been really high on Chris Olave. I had him higher than Garrett Wilson coming out. Um, I'm, I'm not out on that, uh, out on the talent yet. I'm, I am kind of out on the, the way the offense has been scheming and, and the way that Derek Carr has been playing right now, but I'm not out on Olave. So I, I think he's still in that tier for me where I feel like he can definitely take that hop. Um, a couple of the notables that are just a tier below are um, so the sun God, but he, I mean, honestly, like I, I, he was in this tier. He was out of this tier. He was in this tier. He was out of this tier, you know, a couple different times. It's same thing with AJ Brown, AJ Brown with me, that the only issue I have with AJ Brown is just, um, um, and, and not so much this year, but in, in years past, it's just the consistency. Like he's a very big blow up type of guy or he's he's OK, you know. And and for me, as my number one, I, I like that. But I, I, I tend to stay away from like the Mike Williams type character set. And A.J. Brown is closer to that than than he is to Jamar Chase for me in the sense of just blowing up. Um Again, it, you know, it's a bad, it's a, it's a good thing to have AJ Brown, uh, but, but it's it just for, for most of my builds and the way that I like to construct, he's not normally in that top tier for me, but I treat him as a top tier if I'm trying to get value from, you know, from him or, sure. or if I try to trade for him, I, I have traded for him in a, in a few spots where it made sense for the team, but, uh, but yeah, so that, so tier three, I'll, I'll just leave that off is, um, is Brown, AJ Brown, Sun God, Tyree Kill and Zay Flowers. No, oh, nice. Say up there high. So that that's a, that's that brings me kind of the first question that I have of uh, you know I don't really know what to do now that we're into the season. You know, all the older guys are even now basically essentially next year's age uh, at this point. Mm -hmm. So you know, obviously Tyreek is is you know Tyreek and Diggs are having a, a fantastic year, carrying people to to uh, playoffs here at least it would seem. What are we doing with a bunch of the the older guard? I mean, I think it feels like Tyreek and Diggs are maybe close to a year younger than everybody else, or at least Tyreek is 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 twenty nine, going to be thirty into this next year. I think Diggs is thirty in the season. Cups thirty now. Devontae Adams will be thirty one at the end of the season. Um, so you know, kind of, what are your thoughts? How do you, how do you play? I'm, I was having trouble ranking these guys. So the the older guys. I mean, Tyreek, I think, and Diggs deserve to be up here, but. You know, what do we do with Devonte? And then, you know, Cup obviously just had a cup game uh, this past week. So what's your thoughts there, KJ? Uh, I mean, I'm not going to move him down too much until we start seeing the production fall off. Uh, I, I, I guess I, I don't like to project that they're just going to fall off the face of the earth because we've seen receivers be productive for multiple years, even later in their, you know, in their career. And, and Keenan uh, right now, you know. Boom. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a wide receiver one for you. So, I mean, I, we can't, we can't over or understate 
you know, dynasty wide receivers. What we're looking at is a good snapshot of production is, can you guarantee me two to three more years? And I think with even digs with uh, maybe not Devonte, uh, not Devonte, uh, Devonte uh, with Adams, I'm a little bit more concerned just because of his situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Tyree Hill, I mean, I don't see this offense wanting to change a single thing. And he's already come out and said that he's at least given three more years. I, if I yeah. can guarantee three years at this insane production, I'm not moving him out of the tier. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I like, I'm almost fine with putting Tyreek and, and Diggs into that bloated other tier up there that I had. Um, but I do have all four old guys in one tier, but it feels like Tyreek and Diggs. I don't know. It feels like you might get one extra year out of those two guys um, as opposed to Devonte and cup. Just make me feel a little more uneasy. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, Big D any, any follow up on the older guys? No, I mean, similar to what you guys say, I mean, Diggs and, and Hill, um, the way that they play the game, I think, can continue to produce high ceiling fantasy where the other guys, um, Cup and um, Adams, you know, s- still are great right now. I'm not saying that they aren't, but I, I do think that they could get into that Hopkins level where it's like great receiver, great possession receiver, you know, smart player, smart veteran player. So it can get some separation, but may not have that top top end ceiling like like a Hill or Diggs where they could take it to the house out of, out of you know, out of nowhere, you know, out of out mm-hmm. of thin air type of thing. And so. So I think that they're they're both kind of I, I think Hill is a tier above for me as far as just just because of Hill yeah. himself. But then sure. when you put him in that offense and just the way that they they utilize him and the way that he looks, I mean, he's just hands down to me. He's uh, he was one of those guys where I'm still like teetering on putting him in tier two just because of just because of the production. Like you were saying, KJ is like if you tell me I get three years of Tyreek Hill or I can have, you know, um another five years of DK Metcalf, give me Tyree kill, yeah, <laughs> you sure. know, seven days a week, man. Like, yeah, it's just, uh, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of how I view them. I I've got the, the, the vets a little bit lower, um, besides Hill. Um, but when I do my rankings, I tend to do it as if I'm doing a startup, not necessarily a season ranking, you know? And so I'm mm-hmm. looking at it as like, how would I build a team? And that's, and that may be why they're a little bit lower. If I'm doing like, season rankings or obviously not redraft we're not talking redraft tonight but but if i'm doing that kind of thing then then of course some of these guys can shoot up tiers pretty easy because of yeah. the way the build's going or you know you got to be fluid you got to be water in your draft so you know another thing is like depending on how my build's going on my team some of these players may fit better with what i'm trying, sure. to, oh, trying to to fit in so i think um the the, the top i would say the top like 15 16 or for me anyways they're they're pretty they're, they're not interchangeable that there's a reason why they're in tiers, but you know, if I get two of the guys in tier three and, and some really high end running backs in my startup, I'm feeling really great. You know, <laughs> where yeah. if I, I mean, get, if, yeah. If you have digs and, and Hill for the next two years, you're, you're in pretty good shape, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're, and they're price premium. Yeah. 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 Well, it, but I'll say though, their price probably will drop like most veterans do during the, uh, during the non-point scoring season, right? Yeah. Like, Off yeah. season is veteran acquiring season. If you're in, in striking distance in season, a little tougher now trade deadline teams are out, you know, older guys on teams, you know, you get, you get, Hey, I, maybe I can get the most right now, which you, you know, probably can at mm-hmm. that point. Um, and then acquiring them for cheaper in the off season is always a solid move because you know, the, the new shiny things are at the, the highest peak. Uh, cost and some of them pay off as we're about to hit here but i mean th- right now the top three wide receivers tyree kill stefan diggs adam thielen all all yeah. all old dudes yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like we drew it up yeah mm-hmm. um but so you know I, I don't know that thielen and keenan are necessarily making this list right now um just probably due to age out of 20 out of top 25 guys uh but you know some of these other guys what what, what do you what you are they you don't have thielen in your top two <laughs> I'm just did not did not no. all right um hit me with your next tier kj uh so just to to actually glaze over it so actually in in a tier of their own i do have hill olave waddle and smith all in a tier um just because i i think all of those uh one, one is hill and waddle uh i want to separate them but i physically cannot uh because <laughs> we just it, both are very uh, mirroring players to me. They're big plays. Uh, they're extremely fast, very smart receivers, and they're in an elite offense. I mean, the scheme is tailor built for all the players on it. So mm-hmm. um, I, I can't separate them. They're in a tier together. Olave, I'm not willing to move on. I really do believe that this is just 
a poor team. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. I watched, I've watched some of these games. I've forced myself to watch some of them and, and it's painful. Uh, so I think better days are ahead for Olave. Uh, and then Devonta Smith, because if anything were to happen to AJ Brown, he's, he's an absolute, you know, wide receiver one. Like he could, he could probably top fantasy football. He could be the wide receiver one. If anything were to actually extended happen to AJ Brown, I just think that AJ Brown caps him. So that's the only reason I don't push him up any further. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we kind of saw that in the beginning of the season. And then, you know, right, you know, AJ Brown's been getting greased for the while. I mean, I think he's been over 120 for four straight games, th- three straight I games, three. Some, some crazy number, but he's been putting up, you know, big, big, big numbers here. And Devontae just had a big drop in this last one. Oh, um, yeah. Never mind. It has been four. It was a bummer. Um, but yeah, so what's the, um, what's the, what's the next tier for you, uh, Big D? Yeah, so tier, I guess that'd be tier four. I've got Devontae as well, JSN, Chris uh, Godwin, and Ayuk, Ayuk, who's kind of risen up for me um, in yes, comparison to July. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so Smith, JSN, uh, Chris Godwin, and Ayuk are kind of all in that uh, jam-packed um, possession with with good upside kind of kind of tiers is what I look at is the all, all four of those players have the ability to kind of break it maybe not as often as Tyreek Hill or or AJ Brown but but uh, but but often enough and and I kind of feel pretty comfortable about all of them like you said uh, Devonte Smith his 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 ceilings a little capped with AJ and uh, and just the way that offense runs J, JSN still learning the system and they've been having so many issues on the offensive line. I think he's just been doing a lot of under work, underneath work, um, you know, and so, so both of those younger, uh, Jason's a rookie Smith isn't, but you know, kind of in the rookie ish type of things, I, I still think they could easily jump, um, you know, a tier or two in the next couple of years with the uh, maturity and some of the, the personnel moving on. And then uh, Godwin and Ayuk is just there. Uh, I, I was down on Ayuk at the, not, not down. I think he was down a couple tiers, but not as high. But with Purdy, it's just he's such a – it's his DoorDash, man. He, it's it's his, his outlet. That's where he goes. So it's, it's hard to – it's hard not to raise him up when you see that Purdy's going to be – you know, he's kind of solidified himself there in San Francisco now. He had a bad game, but we all have bad days. Um, sure. And and uh, and Ayuk is, seems to be his man, you know, mo- mo- more times than not. Uh, I know they spread it there, but more times than not, when, it, when we talk about just straight wide receivers, Ayuk is the guy that he tends to tends to target. And so, and, you know, Shanahan. That's, yeah. So, yeah. Well, or, I, say. yeah. <laughs> I think, I don't know if it's a knock on the guys like T and DK right now who haven't quite given you what you wanted per se, but I think it's a, you know, an ode to some of these other guys that are, proving that hey we knew the talent was there but maybe we had some questions that have and now been answered a little bit maybe some of them are rookies and maybe some of them are like a brandon ayuk who like you said is becoming basically the wide receiver for the niners they can use debo in other ways and get him his touches get him his points get him his usages but every time you turn around when they need that big chunk it is it is more often than not now a week ago it was kittle three times uh, against dallas um but you know ayuk was coming off a shoulder um, and, and, you know, so, uh, but, and, and yeah, that is, does I stay on the Niners? I don't know, but I, I'm a whole lot less worried that he does or doesn't, um, in this coming year, he's in a contract year, but like he's quickly, be- I mean, quickly becoming one of the better route running, uh, threat wide receivers. So for that, you know, reason also moved up for me up in that Devonta Smith, uh, area as well. Uh, KJ, where, where are you at with the next group of guys? Yeah, so um, pretty pretty close there. Uh, I have Diggs, Ayuk, Adams, Metcalf, and London all in the tier together. Um, pretty much all the things you guys said about Ayuk is just definitely how I feel. Um, we've we've seen his his route savviness, right? We we knew that he was a good separator. We knew that he had good hands. We knew he was a smart receiver. It just needed to be all together as more of a focal point from a quarterback. And Brock Purdy gave him that. Um, I was I was a little bit lower than I am now on Ayuk coming in, just because I I was not a Brock Purdy believer. I still don't know how the hell he's pulling this off. Uh, I mean, we finally saw a bad game. So I got yeah. something to stand on now at least. Um, but yeah, we saw it week one uh, when Ayuk came out and he put up over 120 yards receiving on eight targets, caught all mm-hmm. of them. I mean, the, the guy is a ball magnet. So, um, and I said, if we see it again, I have to move him up a tier. 
And sure enough, we saw it again. So, I mean, he blew up for what, uh, let's see, 148 yards yeah, against Arizona. Granted, it's Arizona, but still, we saw the production again. And I think that he's going to have these blow-up games. It's just going to be, when is it going to happen? And so that might be a bit frustrating, but... I mean, I think he just gets better. He's in the prime of his career right. right now. He's he's only 25. So we've got locked in, you know, another four years, I could say, of this production at least. Right. And that's, you know, that's some of this. Some of this is, you know, the older guys is, is certainly not a projection. But when does that value, you know, cliff fall off? And then these guys that are down at this point now, like most of those other guys aren't too much of a projection at this point. Now it gets to the point where you, you can project a little bit. You can, you can have your differences and values. And I think Ayuk are guys that, you know, kind of rose up the, the charts here for me. I think DJ Moore climbed himself back up into this area for me. Um, I think Hollywood Brown is now up in this area for me with the production that he's been putting up with Dobbs. Uh, we've seen it in the first, I forget what it was, stretch of games last year, eight games, five games where he was wide receiver two or three PPR wise, just absolutely slaying it. Um, you get Kyler back in there or him to a different team next year because of you know however the Cardinals want to play it. I don't have a whole lot of worry in Hollywood Brown from kind of what we've been seeing with Josh Dobbs and the Cardinals uh, right now. You know, he, he's kind of put a lot of my worries to bed. And this this week was his first week in a few weeks of not averaging 15 points, I think, since week one. And, and he was questionable coming in with some illnesses. Um, mm-hmm. And they did get beat up by the Rams who were in division, uh, which is always, you know, those games are always the division games, coin flips, uh, you know, in competitive conferences. So interesting one there. And then. Uh, lost my rankings here for a second. Um, JSN stays up here. I know it hasn't done a whole lot, but I'm I'm still on the um, on on what the player is this week. A little bit more usage, a little bit better uh, depth of target. Uh, so things maybe looking up. And like you said, DK, uh, you know, I know he's signed there for a little while, but I mean, he just keeps seeing you just keep seeing you know uh from him uh, week after week of just just that. He's old school, man. He's that kind of diva kind of guy. Just, you know, just, but, I, you know, I don't know how long he, he doesn't seem like, doesn't seem like a Pete Carroll type of guy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. DK. No. Um, so, so DK slipped a little bit here for me. T slipped a little bit for me. And London has slipped a little bit for me, but just uh, still, still really like all those guys. Um, London, you're kind of seeing it, um, you know, be inconsistent, but he, he hasn't been at an absolute killer most weeks, but, He's been okay, and then there's been a couple of up games that you see where the talent is. If we could just get the targets, um, so those guys have moved down, and then you know I gotta I gotta get my guys A and Puka up in this next uh, tier as well. So uh, bl- another bloated tier for me, uh, but I think it's just because we've gotten some new information. We're seeing you know some of the the changing of the guards a little bit, um, and will it stick? I don't know, but you know wanted to be a little bit reactionary, but not crazy reactionary. So bloated. Uh, tier there for me uh kj uh what, what's your next group of guys yeah so uh my next group um man i wanted to put puka at the top of the tier but i have t higgins just ahead of him uh, i still believe t higgins is a thing i don't think he's dead i think that you know he's going to be a better player than we've seen so far it's just injuries have been bad and the offense was definitely not what we are expecting out of the Bengals to start the season um so yeah t higgins puka nakua dj moore Cooper Cup and Zay Flowers. So I have uh, Nakua and Cup in the same tier. I will say that uh, it seems like every time I come back to my rankings, I drop Cooper Cup a little bit more, which is crazy because <laughs> he gets better every week. Yeah. Uh, so it really doesn't make any sense to do that. But um, the man is 30. And uh, mm-hmm. I just, I, I'm worried about these soft tish, tissue injuries just popping up again. We, we have seen, you know, sure. some aggravations for him, but it's a, it's an offense where they're throwing the ball an absolute ton. So, I mean, this is wide receiver heaven for PPR. So, but Puka Nakua, I mean, they're, they're, he's just locked in this offense for what I see as a longer future. And uh, I just had to pop over because uh, I was curious about Matt Stafford's contract. Technically, he is actually under contract until 2027, but he runs out of guaranteed money after the 2024 season. So we're at least locked into Matt Stafford, presumably without anything crazy happening for the next two years. So, I mean, that's really good. That's what you want for your for your wide receivers. And um, I didn't make uh, I didn't put JSN in this tier, but I did put Flowers. Um, JSN just didn't make the cut. He's in the next tier for me just because. We really don't know uh, if it is going to be what we thought it would be yet. I mean, I want to see it. And yeah, 17% target share, you know, it's getting better. 
And that's what we want to see. But DK Metcalf is there. And I do think that he's going to demand some targets. They're not going to just move away from him. Um, but he does run out of guaranteed money actually after the season. So he has mm-hmm. two more years in his contract, but no guaranteed money. So we could see them make a, a huge change after this season. So he probably should come up a little bit, but just yeah. as it sits right now, I wouldn't rule out the Seahawks keeping DK on. He, he's a pretty big threat on oh, the team. For sure. For sure. Um, yeah, I just, I had him slid down a tier, uh, big D are you, you got one more set of guys here. Yeah. My tier, my tier five is, is very similar. So this would be wide receiver 15 through 21 for me. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, and you know, give, pick the day. It's a different order, but I'll give you the order today is Metcalf, Diggs, Higgins, London, Hollywood, uh, Nico and Pittman. All, all of them are on the same tier for me. Um, Puka didn't quite make it. Same thing with, um, He's kind of in the next tier of like, I really like him, but I want to see him in a full offense with Cooper Cup and just, you know, so probably in this next ranking, I'm, I'm sure he could easily pop into this tier. Um, but but Metcalf, you know, just to, just to highlight what you guys are saying, he just, um, <clears throat> he dropped a tier for me and it's it's mostly because of his, his brain, uh, the way that he's acting on the field and the way that he's just playing off the ball is, is, um, I would hope by now emotionally he would get a little bit more maturity. Um, it seems like he's still, he's gotten better, but he, he still seems to let those DBs get in the in his head or something. I don't, I don't know what it is, but, but once one or twice, two times a, a game, especially if it's a high pressure game, he, you, I, I feel like you can't necessarily count on him. The other thing I noticed is he doesn't have his binkies anymore. His, uh, <laughs> he doesn't. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if the contract ran out or what, but, but, but he's still a, a massive talent. You know, I, I still sure. like him. You know, in in this tier with Diggs, with Higgins, with London and Hollywood, um, those those guys in particular, I think it's situational. Um, not so much Diggs. Obviously, he's he's tied to to Josh Allen. I, I don't know how, how for how much longer. I think it's this year and next year, if I remember right. But but Higgins could be moving. Drake London could have a new quarterback. Brown could be moving. But they're all great talents. I think they've shown that they're pretty great talents. And so I, I wanted to keep them higher in the in the top twenty four of my overall wide receivers, just because I I think they deserve to be there. Yeah. Um, maybe play on the field um, by the end of the season. We you know I, I could feel different. I, I I'll, I'll subject to change. But but for right now, you know I I've never been a huge T Higgins guy in that offense. But I haven't not been a huge T Higgins guy. I feel like yeah. the way that they play and the way that they've been passing around the ball, it's kind of the same thing with them um, with Joe Mixon is, is like he gets all the opportunity in the world, but most of that opportunity is, is scrambling and, and close to the line of scrimmage. And and I, I don't know if that's necessarily his strength. So, so T Higgins, I think for me, him moving actually may bump him up in a tier comparison to him re-signing in Cincinnati. Yeah. And that's, that's what I think happens. Honestly, he was one of the most sought after wide receiver, you know, trade targets coming into this season was everybody was talking about who's going to trade for T like he's going to be an immediate wide receiver one, whoever trades for him. And the fact that Cincinnati came out when they have Jamar chase on with, you know, alongside him and said, we're not trading T Higgins. Mm -hmm. That means they value him like crazy high. So that, that says a lot to me. So. Yeah, and and he could very well sign, and and I don't know. I mean, the offense could change, things could change. If he stays there, though, I think that might actually put him in the same tier, or maybe below, unless something crazy happens for me. But but if he ended up somewhere else, um, like you know, let's say Carolina, where Thielen's just eaten right now. You know, we talk about uh, Adam, and he's a great older wide receiver, veteran, savvy. But T. Higgins has the same kind of body style as as Thielen and younger, more more you know sporadic, I guess you could say, and and maybe a little bit more hops. Um, I could see him being an absolute monster and in, in a in an offense that is featuring him in comparison to an offense that is you know definitely likes him, definitely wants him around, definitely wants to run for the championship, but not necessarily featuring him. We're getting all hyped up and Carolina is just going to trade for D hop and fully embrace the retirement home that they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then so, I think the last two, sorry, just the, the, the two on the bottom there that may be outliers is, is uh, Nico Collins and Pittman, just the way that their usage is and, and, and the, the offense that's schemed around them. Again, this is the opposite for T, from the T Higgins argument is just, I really like what they're doing there as far as scheme, the way the coaching is. And then the players themselves, I was higher on, anyways and so when you put those all together i feel like their opportunity 
is wide receiver one for their team and in their systems. And they can definitely um, produce at this tier level at the, at the back end of your, your wide receiver two with an upside of like wide receiver 12 wide receiver 13, um, you know, on a, on a year. Um, I, I think they also have the ability to be, wide receiver one on the day, you know what I mean? Like, which is great. And that's kind of what I want in this tier is is the talent to be able to be wide receiver one on the day and the talent to be in the wide receiver 12 range for the year is kind of where I look at for this, this mid tier five tier five. I think that's a good summation. I think that's fairly how I feel pretty much how I feel about this kind of talent that I'm, or this, this tier that I'm wrapping up with. Um, So I got, I got DK London T Pittman and I got Nico uh, sneaking in there at the end and then Jordan Addison and Debo, I don't really know what to do with there, um, but they're kind of hanging out. Like, I'm not sure they're quite in that tier yet, but they're, you know, somebody's got their hand out reaching for them. Um, so uh, KJ, w- what do you got? Yeah. So uh, this next tier rounds out my top 25 and I've got JSN, Jordan Addison, neck and neck right there. I think that they're just very young players with very bright futures. They're both only 21 uh, and they're elite talent talents coming out of the draft. Like we knew that mm-hmm. they were going to be difference makers. Um, Addison is just a curious, uh, th- what keeps him so high for me is that we don't really know what's going to happen with Justin Jefferson. When Kirk Cousins situation gets worked out, he said, I guess publicly that he would follow Kirk Cousins if he went somewhere else, mm-hmm. which is, super interesting. interesting to me and yeah. that would that would vault addison really high um as long as you know everything stays the same for the offense i mean they're throwing the ball a ton their defense is terrible if we can keep that going you know this is great <laughs> for ppr uh so yeah jsn jordan addison nico collins absolutely uh he's another case that uh he's a young receiver he's only 24 and he's tied to what we can already see is an elite some elite quarterback play i think he's great and he's in a great situation and he's going to be the one for the foreseeable future and then christian watson and michael pittman jr so oh. i snuck christian watson in yeah there. you did nice. absolutely um, is that a green bay hat you have on or is that a padres hat i don't know that's a padres hat yeah <laughs> uh, i'll wear the green bay one next time um I'll, I'll break the certificates off the bar. Um, Do you but, usually put your hair in cornrows as well when you play or is that? Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, you got to keep yeah. it tight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're owed to Christian. Yeah, that's right. Uh, dude, Christian Watson, it, it, we haven't seen, you know, the blow up yet. He's dealt with some injury, but we did see it last season and people have quickly forgot just what a difference maker is on the field. He could take yeah. it to the house kind of like a Tyree kill on a play. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I didn't want to drop him too far because I think that he's a great trade candidate. Go, go feel out the Watson owner right now because they're worried about Jordan love. They're worried about Romeo Dobbs. They're worried about everything, but Christian Watson right now. So you might be able to pull that off on the cheap right now. Yeah, probably have, you know, him, the, those Christian Watson. And I, I like Pickens a good bit still, too. I probably got those kind of guys in the next tier down with Burks and, and Jameson. Yeah, that, that, those guys that we – and not that we haven't seen it from Christian Watson, but I feel like we have, like – we know the talent's there with some unanswered questions. I think Christian Watson has answered most of those questions. Just, you know, we haven't quite seen it again, of some of it being hurt. Um, so – but I agree with you there. I like that you snuck him in there. And then Big D, it sounded like you had maybe a couple more to round out that top 25. Yeah, so this would be uh, 22 through – it goes down to 28. So this is the ish part of the beginning of the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, and, and these are all kind of players that I either I really like, uh, I've seen them produce, or I want to see a little bit more. And so I kind of talked about Puka at the top about, you know, I, I want to see what he looks like with Cup in the offense. I want to see a little bit more from him. Same thing with Addison. I'd like to see what he looks like without Justin Jefferson there. And so they're kind of at the top of this tier for me. Um, Rushy Rice is one of those players that has, has moved up quite a bit. Um, he's in this, just the way he hasn't got a lot of usage, but the usage that he gets, the way that it seems like they're starting to scheme him a little bit more, like he's he's definitely one of my higher risers. And then and then the rest of this is just you know some 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 solid veterans that give me you know some 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 chills right. We got Debo, we got DJ Moore. Uh, I know everybody is off of right now, but Deontay Johnson's just a PPR machine. You know, sure. when he's healthy, he's just he's he's the, he's the man. And then my boy, he's dropped a tear for me, but my boy Christian Kirk, like I gotta I gotta give love to Kirk. I, I think I still like the offense. I still like Lawrence. I, I I enjoy Ridley being there. I think he's a great compliment to Kirk because I think they do 
different pieces in that offense. And I was a little nervous. I'll be honest, game one where Kirk was not schemed at all in that, in that offense. But I think since then they've kind of stabilized some of their stuff. I know they're still working through it, but he just is one of those players again, just kind of like Deontay where it's um, I use this phrase before, but he's compound interest to me. Like he may not be that wide receiver one for me, but if he can be a wide receiver two solid to a, a, to a solid flex, just get me really consistent points on a week in week out basis with a little bit of a, a little bit of an upside, you know, a little bit of a, a chance to, to crest a little bit with a touchdown or so, you know, um, so, so that kind of rounds out that. So real quick, Addison, Puka, Rushi Rice, Debo, DJ Moore, Deontay Johnson, Christian Kirk. So yeah, a little bloated, like you said, too. I, I, I bloated some of these some of these tiers out but that's that's kind of where tier six and the top 25 stand for me yeah i like i like that um like i said i i think i had debo and addison right out right out of there i like i like the christian watch and love the um deontay johnson uh love in there uh amari cooper and and keenan allen any consideration to sneak them in the back of this amari for me he's right there he's he's right around the 29 30 ish type of type of range so same thing with Evans. So I've got Amari, Evans, and Adams as my next kind of tier by them, almost by themselves, just because I feel like they have that production as veterans. But I don't know if I don't know where they're at come next year at this time, right? So, so I'm, I'm a little hesitant to put them up higher than that. But 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 I do think Amari's right there. And the other person that probably is a dark horse for me that I'm really keeping an eye on is Jacoby Myers, man. Like, oh sure, gotta give him. Love that you're giving him a shout out there. Yeah, I mean, the dude is balling. He's ball. He balled in uh, New England, and now he comes over to the Raiders. You know, scheme, all this kind of crap, all all kinds of shit going down. But he's still, he still just looks great on the field. Not not just mm. producing, but he looks really good. So so he's kind of a he's kind of a dark horse. I got him highlighted, if you will, and I'm I'm watching him. He could definitely raise into that. You know, um, one of these next two tiers. So. Yeah, I think I think also Mike Evans needs a, needs a little bit of love too. I mean, just mm-hmm. a for, forgotten asset there for a little while. Um, been a little slower uh, since going out with the injury and then the bye week, um, but had a pretty productive first couple of games. The Bucks were just seemingly like a little off on this last uh, go round, but Mike Evans, you know, get, getting a little love here. I, I didn't know what to do with with those kind of guys. I, I still wouldn't do anything crazy with him, but he's you know some of those some of those veterans. You say you know the the off season, they get cheaper. Well, Mike, Mike Evans just, you know, n- never had any, nobody ever wanted anything to do with him. Uh, yeah. But it's nice to see him having a nice, a nice little year there with Baker. Uh, so I just wanted to give him a little bit of love because it felt like he always, and, and Amari too, really, you know, no, nobody ever really puts any respect on Amari's, Amari's name. And he's somebody who you probably still could go get. Um, and you know, some of those veterans right now are kind of untouchable because they are scoring points in your lineup, but still for whatever reason, Amari never really gets his respect. So, uh, he may be a veteran that's obtainable. Anybody got anything else before we close out uh, of guys that surprised you or guys that have really moved down for you? Uh, as as far as for me, Jerry Judy is free falling. Uh, yeah, just, same. Just, I mean, we man, we I really wanted to keep him in the twenty four. To be honest, I, I mean, he's he's so good. Uh, I, I you know he's a route running specialist, and I don't know what the hell's going on uh, in Denver. <laughs> I don't think they they even know what's going on. Um, but yeah, he he's just falling like a stone right now. So that that really sucks to see. He, we could see him pop back up. You know, depending on where he goes, we know he's on the market. So I think he'll be on the move soon. It's just uh, depending on where he goes. Carolina, baby. Um. Are they going to do it? Oh man, I don't. Know. <laughs> they're gonna do something super disappointing i'm just telling you right now <laughs> <laughs> probably so um i would say uh for me um you know terry's probably dropping a little bit he's, he's just mm-hmm. getting older and I'm, I'm just i don't know if the enemy's gonna take this team over or what or uh, it seems like he'll probably have some staying power because it doesn't seem like the you know the offense is a is a problem but just the way they're scheming the offense right now uh, and, and Dotson, really, like I love Jahan Dotson. It is crazy to me that he doesn't have any sort of usage at all through this season. Uh, but but Terry has been fine. But, you know, I, I believe Terry is talented as any of those top 24 receivers we just listed off. Uh, but, he, you know, I got to keep him out of it right now. Um, and 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 Jahan is still amongst the trade target for me. But you know, not, not anybody you can do anything with redraft. I mean, see you later. Um, and it's just, you know, I, I, I'm even starting to question if how, how big of a target he is. Cause you know, how does this be enemy scheme, you know, end, 
in the end, is it just going to be Kansas? I mean, we saw what it was with with Tyreek and, and him, but I mean, how does it end over there? You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and that's exactly what my concern is, is that this offense did come out and look strikingly like kind of what they operated in Kansas City. You know, have a, a at least a, a decent rushing game to keep people honest and then kind of feed your tight end. They moved away from that a little bit this game. I think Logan Thomas had one target, which was baffling to me because i just traded for him uh <laughs> they did have a big lead they got up um, yeah uh, but I, I figured that you know no matter up down or sideways that he would just kind of get those fed over the middle you know short move the chain targets you know i yeah. wasn't expecting he but he is constantly a red zone threat so that's the nice thing logan thomas pin that in that mm-hmm. he's somebody yeah. who should be on your team uh but yeah Jahan dodson he's somebody that i'm adding in dynasty redraft he's droppable uh, he's only cracked 10 PPR fantasy points once. And that's mm-hmm. because he actually got in the end zone and that's the yeah. only TD that he's had all season. I mean, the utilization he's been on the field. He's, you know, he had, he, he, they, they targeted him and he was open and he dropped it in this last game. Uh, but you know, which sucks. It shouldn't, you know, should be like, Oh God damn it. But it shouldn't matter. He's I just, it's, it's crazy to me. Cause he, I feel like he can get open at any point at any time. Um, and it just, it stinks that it's not working out. So, uh, you know, process over results as, as they say, um, That's right. <laughs> so, so, uh, big D you got yeah. anything to close up shop? No, I mean, I think you covered most of, you know, most of the fallers didn't fall too many tiers. That's what I noticed. Most of the jumpers jumped quite a few tiers, right. For me and in, in my rankings, you know, again, this was from, um, from July till now. So getting able to see the, the rookies out there, seeing what Houston looks like. Those were some of the bigger jumps, say flowers jumping into my tier, Three, of course, is a is a pretty big jump, but uh, but loving the offense. And then some of the fallers you talked about, Terry, you know, just the way the usage is, not so much the talent, kind of the DJ Moore effect from from years mm-hmm. past. You know, like he just he, you know that he's got it, but he just doesn't get it. He doesn't get a chance. Um, Burks is another one that's dropped considerably yep. for me. Um, uh, Jamison Williams, you know, we'll mm-hmm. see, but he's he's kind of not dropped as much, but he's kind of on that that drop down. And then. I think there's no surprise here from our rookie re-ranks is um, Quentin Johnston is, is continuing sure. to, to, to tumble and tumble. I mean, he wasn't really high in my ranks to begin with, but he's, <laughs> he's down a tier or two. Um, yep. And, uh, and Mingo. So, so those are some of the, the, the bigger rookies. And then the one person that I'd like to just kind of say is, um, and I don't, I don't know what happened, but Juju, Juju Smith Schuster just went from yeah. like a wide receiver one at one point, overall wide receiver one. So <laughs> yeah. like, I, I just, I have no clue how to rank them anymore. Like, well, they're just not even using, I don't know what the hell's going on with the Patriots, man. Yeah, it's just, I, I don't know what they're not even using Juju. I don't, it's like, he's got, he's gotta be your second first best receiver. I don't understand what's going on up there. It's, it's a very strange situation. Uh, Patriots so. need to sign Antonio Brown stat and unlock Juju. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what does it. And then I think one of the other or two of the other risers, and we've talked about them on, on the rising show was kind of like tank Dell, Michael Wilson, those kind of players. So those guys continue to be on my radar. Um, they're, they're still a little bit lower on my tiers, but I'm definitely, definitely um, just, just like uh, I talked about Jacoby Myers. Those are some of the guys I'm highlighting and, and, and want to this next quarter that we've got coming up this next four weeks or so, I'm going to keep an eye on their production, their usage and see what, see what it looks like. Um, yeah. Man, we're uh, halfway through the third quarter right now in this game, and Quentin Johnson has a target, not even a catch, Ooh. just a target. So <laughs> if you were hoping for that post by bump, it didn't happen, guys. It, Sorry. It didn't no. happen. It didn't happen. Now, as soon as we close this out, we'll have four for 50 in a touch. So. I dare you. <laughs> dare I dare you. you. Dare you. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, five-star review, all that jazz. Uh, holler at us on the, uh, on the Patreons for a $5 holler. Uh, we'll we'll catch you next time. We very much appreciate you. Uh, good stuff, KJ. Good stuff, Big D. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Peace.